welcome to this uh, SHG course. And um, I'd like to know before before I begin um, this course, DNA and you is um, the purpose of this course is to really um, talk to you about DNA technology, right? And it stems from uh, some questions that I get, some perceptions of what DNA can and cannot do, right? So the, the, the main purpose of this is um, just to give you a general idea of what it is really about and to at least quash some fears about it but uh, also know which areas of concerns are really areas of concern, right? And that, I mean, definitely in any new technology, we're dealing with things of the unknown, right? As, as simple as the recent COVID um, uh, vaccination. It has to be done very quickly, it has to be approved very quickly, bearing in mind the risks or whatever the uh, potential um, negativities that may come from it. We don't really know. As, as far as we know, you know, the, the, as far as the scientists is concerned, the data is still being collected in terms of who will uh, benefit, is there any adverse reactions to receiving all this and so on. But having said that, in all throughout humanity and so on, we, we come to this point every now and then. I mean, from the early years of vaccination, for example, right? Uh, where um, it was encouraged that you introduce yourself to the, the control amount of the virus and so on. So, so things, and, and the decision at that time was, of course, there are two factions. One, believing it, the others not believing it, and so on, so it's quite normal. And also, but, but the challenge, but the challenge um, at present, I think, for uh, the current generation is overload of information. Right? My time, when I was studying, um, I had to at least wait two weeks if I want to do interlibrary an interlibrary loan, you know, when our library does not have the resources, so we have to get it. Oh, I know we can get this article from a UPM library and so on. So we have to request for interlibrary loan, give it to the library, and then forget about it. And then, like two weeks later, suddenly I get a mail and say, "Oh, this is the question that I'm talking about. And this is the paper that I was looking for." But today is very different especially for you who are very engaged with social media and so on, you are bombarded with information that you don't, you're not even requesting to, to find and then you are bombarded with all this. So the challenge at the moment is actually to be able to sieve fact and fiction, myth or um, real and so on. Right? So that's, that's the, the whole idea of having uh, this course called uh, it stems out of um, my own uh, sense of maybe I don't know responsibility to share the knowledge, and not just to the science students, but also um, for those outside of science. But but it's very interesting to see the diverse uh, group of people that we have, um, and I'm very excited to to share what I want to share with you. But more importantly, I need to explain to you how this course is going to. Uh, the general idea of this course, all right? I think I only need about this is the first week, second week, and third week. Uh, third week is probably just to cover. So I just need the first week and second week to, to give you lectures, to just give you an overview of what DNA is, and maybe on the second. Week, maybe next week I'm going to talk to you about 
what can we actually do with DNA knowledge? Those are the two main things that I'm going to deliver. This course is also, there's no exam, right? So it's actually really about continuous assessment and of you um, doing your part of the, uh, the course, right? So that's why I ask, um, I, I, su I suppose if you're interested with this topic, then it gets easier. If, if you're just taking it just because, then it's probably going to be a bit difficult for you to get through this course. Because by the third week, by the third week, um, basically I want you to come up with a topic of concern. Right? Because this is about DNA technology and what it means to you. Right? This is so it can be anything. It can be, um, maybe you're interested to know about the GMO. Okay, what, what, what are DNA issues that you have heard? Anything at all that comes to mind? I'm not sure if it qualifies as a DNA issue, yeah. but recently there was a first completely synthetic embryo. Completely synthetic embryo, yeah, okay. And that, 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 that borders around the ethics. Ethics as well as um, cloning. Right. right? Um, yes? I do like it because it's like the genetic uh, inclusion for the type of potential to promote mm -hmm. the area of study. Okay. So that's one, one area, area of concern. Now, any other areas of concern that you may have heard in the newspaper, in the radio, that you think, of, hmm, can DNA really do this? or? If DNA can do this, you know, you're, you're concerned. Or, you may be very excited, wow, DNA cannot do this. <laughs> it can be either way. So, any, anything else? One is the synthetic embryo. It, uh, somehow it triggers, now we have synthetic meat. Meat that you right, can, right, yeah. yeah? You, you know that we can actually make meat. So, what else? Any other thing that comes to mind about ge genetics or DNA that, that you think is of concern? It's, let's let's keep this an open class. You can say whatever. You can shout. You can. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Otherwise, it's not going to be be very interesting. Cloning yeah. Of Cloning of what? You know, one of the things that when I was starting to start, now you're talking about genetics and DNA now, where you hear a lot of this. I took genetics where at a time when my, my uncles and aunties would ask me, Oh, are you studying University of Malaya? Oh, yeah, what, what course are you taking? Uh, genetics. I go, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so, what are you going to be? What, what are you going to work at? Geneticist. <laughs> okay, something else. <laughs> At that time, right? And you watch Jurassic Park. Yeah? Uh, what? Jurassic Park 4? What? 5? I don't know what, what is the edition now. But when I was studying, uh, the first one just came out. When I was in undergrad, the first Jurassic Park was. Uh, came out, and at that time, I became the center of information for my students, well, for my students, for my, for my friends. You know, you know, anybody remember or watch the Jurassic Park, the first one? When they introduced the, the theme park, they got the DNA from? Mosquito. Mosquito was, in, was preserved yeah. inside? The amber fossil. Amber. Yeah. And then they took it up, they took it up, of course the DNA was in fragments. How did they fill it in? Use what? What animal? Frogs. Oh, you 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 watched it recently, or <laughs> <laughs> frogs? Yes, uh, amphibians. Of course, you know. But the, the the first thing that 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 is worrying from there is that you know you match dinosaur and frog DNA, but you get completely perfect dinosaurs and. Where does the frog quality go? You know? <laughs> yeah, but but that, that's the, the thing. Right? So I, I get a lot of questions from my friends. They say, hey, you know, this is, this is and then and then I also some of them say, oh, you're completely oh, sorry, 
see that's my Malay coming out. <laughs> so you actually study this DNA and I was like, ah yes. <laughs> at that time. At that time. Right? So there were concerns, like ones were cloning. Uh, in genetic terms, cloning means a lot of things. Either cloning making copies, cloning as in uh, producing copies of full animals, cl cloning uh, humans, producing um, babies and so on. Um, and also when you are able to get copies of the genes are also sometimes cloning as well. Right? So there are various terms. Okay? Cloning, anything else? What else have you heard that may be of concern? Any, 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 any other? Yes, of course. Uh, transferring talent? From our ancestors, maybe like, you know, uh, my parents, it comes from my parents. Ah. And then their talents came from their parents, yeah. maybe like that, and came from talent. Yeah. Um, I, 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 uh, when I was a student, I played volleyball. And when I was in school, I played rugby. Uh, I don't know which came first. I played first, or my brother said he also, apparently he played rugby also. Then I realized that my, when my father, when he was uh, younger, he actually played volleyball and rugby. Yeah? But not, not to say, I mean, he never mentioned before that. Yeah, sometimes you, you see things along the way and then you get influenced, right? But he never mentioned anything before that. And um, so apparently we have the same kind of interests. You know, I I I, I cannot answer that uh, whether whether it actually comes from. Uh, but so what your what your concern is inheritance, and unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, inheritance comes in a package. What I'm trying to say is that you don't you just don't get the good ones. You also get the the bad ones. Yeah, <laughs> and that's been uh, in my family. I've got four daughters. Um, in my family, it's always. I, I like to observe things, and then, and then just this morning, um, I was talking to my mother. My mother stays with me, and she said she uh, she wants to she stays with me, so she wants to go back to her house because she wants to clean it and so on. And she and she says, you know, when can she go back? So I said anytime. I said this to her from you know whenever. I said anytime you want to go, and she said. But she wants to go. She wants. She doesn't want to trouble me. So I said, it's not. It's not even. It's the least of troubles. You know, anytime you want to go, you can go. You know what? She just lives half an hour away. It's not like going back to UK or something. Yeah. She just lives that. I, I, I live in Damansara and she lives in Kelantan. Mm -hmm. So anytime I can send you after work, before work, during work. You know, so, mm. so when when are you free? <laughs> she just stings a lot. And I was just telling my wife, you know, my daughter number three, she likes to do that as well. She thinks a lot, overthinks things. You know? I make decisions for her. I mean, sometimes she asks me for, for decisions. I say, okay, maybe you should do this. But what if? I say, oh, okay, if you want that, maybe you do that. Yeah, but what if? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's totally opposite with, with me where, yes, I do think about it. And then I say, okay, I'll just make one decision and go. So, so these traits, so it's, it's always me and my wife, and I'll say that. When, whenever it's a good one, it's always from me, or you know, everybody wants to claim it, and if it's not good, it's always from the other person. Yeah. All right, traits, how traits are being passed on. Anything else? Okay, how many of you have heard of CRISPR? Genetic splicing. The genetic splicing. Yes, what can it do? You can modify genes, cut and yes. How many of you have heard of gene therapy? You heard it not too familiar with it. What does gene therapy mean to you? What 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 does the term mean? Therapy means treatment. Gene therapy? Yes. Yes. Treating your genes. And all this while when I start studying and so on, there are ways to actually change genes inside tubes, in vitro. In vitro, right? in experimental, you can change that, you can do. But you can never go to the cell itself and change. Because your body is huge, for example, right? Your, 
body is trillions of cells. But you want to correct your heart cell. How do you get this delivery system to go where it wants to go? That was the challenge. But now you can. But now you can make corrections to your DNA. Yeah. So, have you heard of the, in, in China, the, I um, can't remember, Fu Jianke, where uh, the one doctor genetically modified a baby without the parents' knowledge. Have you heard? In Hong Kong, China, what, what, what has he done? Um, their parents, the parents of the babies, is here told the associate press that he carried out his experiments to protect the twin sisters from HIV infection. Uh, the, ch the, the babies came from parents who were infected by HIV. So that means to say, and I think he realizes that how, how does HIV uh, infect? You know, all these viruses or bacteria, they do something to you. For example, COVID attacks your respiratory system and so on. And most of the time, it, how it does that is that some proteins or some elements are able to attach to a particular part of DNA and makes modifications, right? But how, how does antibiotic works? You've heard, you heard of antibiotics. How does it work? Against the bacteria, but how does it attack the bacteria? It doesn't really kill the bacteria. It prevents the bacteria from making copies of itself. It destroys the bacterial operating system, so to speak. You know, like instead of, I, I know this computer is gonna make copies of itself, then I put in a virus, destroy it. That's how it does it. And most of the time, it requires a protein or a DNA making attachments to the invasive DNA or protein. And this attachment requires recognition. So he has found a way where if I can change this recognition, so that means this protein cannot bind anymore, so it renders the baby to be resistant to HIV. That's what he did. Intentions are well, very, very well and good. But I, I, I have to read again, but I think somewhere along it says it, he, he did not do it with the consent of the parents. <laughs> and, and he was so happy about it that he actually made an announcement and this borders to borders you know, to, to ethics, to ethical issues and so on. So this but point of the matter that we're gonna discuss not discuss, talk about in this class is is um, what is possible and what is not. I leave the decisions to you. I'm not here to convince you good or bad. No, that's not my job. I'm just going to tell you what it is, what we can, so that you are thinking along the right um, uh, path or the right way, or at least I can tell you where to get the best information. All right. Okay. So, so um, first week lecture, second week probably lecture, and third week a little bit of lecture discussed. But by the third week, I need you to find out about issues of concerns. If you don't have any, talk to your friends, talk to your whoever, who maybe who, who, who likes to read more and you know and says, do you know about this and what are your concerns? Find an area because you are going to choose a topic that you're going to write about or do some reading and do some analysis about, right? The process you're going to, what? Just one topic throughout this, this 14 weeks, right? Uh, among, uh, that I have here, the GMOs, genetically modified organisms, that became a hot topic at some time. Every now and then, now you hear it crop up and then, uh, and then, and then ignore it and then crop up again, you know? Genetically modified organisms. Designer babies, it's called designer babies, but basically, 
I mean, we have the capability, capabilities now to select, especially when you go to IVF, in vitro fertilization, then you can select for certain traits that you want. For example, I want a male, I want a boy, I don't want a girl, I, I want, um, look at the traits, I want somebody who's tall or, you know, it's going to be possible, right? Um, transgenics, have you heard of transgenics? Comparison between uh, normal fish and then transgenic fish. Transgenic? transgenic comes from the word uh, trans means um, ability to change or yeah. and then the genes. So uh, any plant that has been genetically modified is called transgenic. So transgenic fish has been modified, perhaps to contain growth hormones, it becomes bigger. Uh, they have the uh, they can control the expression of the genes, right, yeah. but not really changing the genes. Okay. That, so they, they they have this uh, to express this color, that color. So that's why they can morph into uh, different forms, and so, on, so they can control that. But the genes are all there. So having having bigger uh, you know fish and so on, we may be concerned, and so uh, you know. But for to tackle the issues of famine, where food is not enough, right? Obviously having this genetically modified uh, versions of the fish or crops, or, or you know, to be able to design crops that can withstand extreme weathers so that you can actually plant in the Sahara Desert maybe, right? So these are the things that need perhaps genetics can think about. Um, but of course, sometimes these are the things that you probably not hear. The media, the paper, sometimes you wonder, you know, they say they are, they are bringing the news to you, but sometimes I see what's more important is what sells. And what sells is controversy, you know, something interesting and so on. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? What, what, one of our researchers, Prof. Yasmin, who does work uh, in bananas and was asked about what are the benefits of bananas. So she says, oh, banana contains a lot of potassium, blah, blah, blah. and then she mentioned something about, you know, that potassiums are good for your well-being, you know, for heart diseases and things like that. What comes in the paper, banana can cure heart disease. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are the things. Uh, they want to make it catchy, but as scientists and so on, I'm very wary of what I say to the media. Uh, you know, because because they want to pick up. Um, yeah, they want to sell. So, on the third week, I want. Um, so what you need to do is you need to first decide on a topic, all right? And then maybe come up with one or two sources of information, be it an article in a magazine or online or whatever, uh, right? Something that triggers your curiosity and that's got to do with DNA, find that out. And then you need to tell me what it is. Remember, this is continuous assessment. So I'm going to be very specific in terms of, okay, third week, you need to come up with topic. Need to come up with maybe two papers, and, so and then once we can agree on that, all right, then you say okay. Four, third, fourth, and fifth week, right, is your, your research week. That's where you try and get papers and so on. Upon which, on the sixth week, right, sixth week, you 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 will probably at during that time, anytime you want to consult, we can. Officially, Thursday eight to ten will be will be allotted to you, but we won't. You don't need to have classes, mm -hmm. right? So it's all your own own studies, you know. But I should be available officially eight to ten.
But at other times, you know, you're in the WhatsApp group, you want to WhatsApp personally, it's, not, it's, it's fine. The only thing I request to you is that if you WhatsApp me and I don't reply, WhatsApp again. <laughs> That's all I, I request. I'm not trying to ignore you, I'm not, it's just that sometimes I get something and say, okay, okay, I'll reply tomorrow, you know, and then suddenly I'm okay. okay. Please WhatsApp again, please text me again, all right? Don't, don't call. Um, you can, but, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have lots of meetings. And I don't usually answer uh, numbers that I don't recognize with all the perhatian, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a lot of that. It's so annoying. Um, okay, right? So, oh, sorry. Six week, then you shall come up with a fixed topic and then with supporting papers at least. Um, you know, you do. So, we need to show me. So, on the sixth week, you need to show me your fixed topic and then maybe come up with the, the framework of, of what you're going to uh, because because for every topic, eh, let's say for example, you're talking about uh, synthetic so that's what you're using, that's what you're using, eh? so there will be certain, so you, your, your, your idea of the whole write-up will be of course you have the preamble, the introduction and then probably areas of method, scientific methods so you need to really be able to write about what, what methods are, are there and then uh, what are, and then a section, maybe the focus is your, what are your concerns, I mean, uh, from, from what you have read, you know, so you put it there and then some concluding remarks, right? As, as I said, I'm not going to say yes or no, yea or nay, no, it's up to you, right? because you are the ones who are doing it as well. But all, I, all I'm interested in is for you to actually be able to get informed decision. And then informed too comes from the right sources. That's all I have to right? So, and then, uh, for that matter, for that matter, you can either work individually, all right? Or you can work in groups. Maximum three people. And these three, from different faculties, <laughs> I want you to mix around, right? Uh, the, the only purpose they have, for example, if you're talking about cloning, uh, or talking about GMO, right? GMO in general will have one approach, but it can be in rice, it can be in maize, it can be in. So you are still doing individual work, specific topics, but you can form a group so that you know your general items will be. Um, similar, then you can have discussions amongst yourselves if you want. But if you meet and then you always bicker and, and always fight, then maybe you are well off <laughs> doing on your own. So you have an option, right? To, right to work together or to work on your own. Of course, when you work together, you will have peer assessment as well. So I'm going to uh, uh, guide you into that. All right now. In week, week eight, now, by, because by now you will have your topic, you will have your resources, you will have your name, you will have your idea of what you want to write, you know, you, you, all this while, I hope, I hope you can make your arrangements with me in terms of when you want to discuss. All right? There are two ways you can text me, but I think now, my students sometimes they have uh, a better way to come and see me is actually to contact my PA. My, my, you know? <laughs> then suddenly in my daddy is like, oh, this person wants to see me, my student. I say, oh, okay, this is smart. Because sometimes you ask me, and I say, okay, okay, come see me tomorrow. If I sometimes I don't realize, or maybe then somebody else calls me. You know? But if if you contact to the PA, then they put in my daddy, so it, it will not change. <laughs> so it's up to you. Right. Uh, by the way, my PA's number is 7967 03 03 7967 4200 yeah, yeah, here's the number 4200 and one Wati. Right? Uh, you just tell her you are from this class and you want to make Okay? 
you can come as a group. Uh, but it's up to you. Okay. So by week eight, I, I'm going to give you this, right? By week eight, right? Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of reading and discussions in, in the meantime, right? So by week eight, you're going to prepare. Have you heard about three minute thesis? Three minute thesis. Three minute thesis. Three minute thesis is a worldwide competition for PhDs in which you're given three minutes to explain your thesis. <laughs> and the analogy to it is not really about you know, oh, this is my method. This is no, it's not about that. It's about the, the analogy is that you're waiting for a bus that comes in three minutes, and suddenly the guy or girl next to you and said, you know, so what are you doing? And this person is totally a stranger and so on, so you cannot talk using chemical engineering language, you know. You need to talk about it, you need to impress to that person within three minutes why your work is important. I can say, for example, part of my work is actually doing with dolphins. I can tell you I get the DNA out from the DNA, I can use a PCR and a PCR, I can uh, amplify the microsatellites in order, it doesn't make any sense to you sometimes, right? It does to me, you know, I can get all the variations and I can calculate the heterozygosity, you know, whatever. <laughs> but if I tell you I, I want to really protect the uh, dolphin because the population is declining and one of the importance about uh, one of the major contributors of decline is when the population is not uh, uh, there's not there's no variability. And how do I explain that? Let's look at COVID. Some of us are hit very very badly. We we lost a lot of um, our, our love love dear ones. But some of us are only affected very mildly. So that is diversity, right? So you need that. So that a population, whatever population needs that for survival. So if a population, for example, then when you do some diversity analysis, you'll find that it's not diverse, that that population will be under threat. This is the basis of, uh, you know, where they say this population is endangered, threatened, vulnerable, whatever, and then if you don't find it anymore, it becomes extinct. So you, said, you, you understand that part. But when I talk to you about amplifying DNA and so on, trying to do this, you know, that probably doesn't make sense. So this is what it's about. So in, you prepare that, because on the ninth week, you're gonna make this three minute thesis. I'm gonna call perhaps two or three other, well, two other lecturers to stand in, and you'll be evaluated based on, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, usually there's no question. Usually there's no question, right? So, so the eighth week is really, really like a, a rehearsal thing that I can give you pointers and things like that. Uh, come on. And I can tell you again. Let me emphasize again. This is a continuous assessment. is a learning process. So, for example, I, like I said, right, on the sixth week. You're supposed to come up with titles and papers and so on. And I did say, week four or five, come and talk to me, discuss with me whether the title. You can opt not to come. And then you come to me on the sixth week and say, this is my papers. Upon which, if I say they're not suitable, then I'll have to give you less marks. So it's right, really up to you. It's the same thing. The the you I will tell you when the assessment is going to get. To, to be done, for example, the assessment of three minute thesis is actually on the ninth week. So the eighth week is really about you, maybe we have some examples if you want. And if you come here, nobody wants, then okay, we don't have any. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's what's gonna happen, right? If you wanna come, if you need, fine. If you're gonna come to me privately, also fine. I'm okay. But the eighth week is actually just for you to, read, to, to tell me what you have, and your preparation, and I can give you pointers in terms of. And let's not, the, as I said, the official time is 8 to 10 on Thursday. Other than that, it's also fine, as long as you can get my time, right? Um, bearing in mind that I do have families, I do need sleep, <laughs> I do 
limit my weekends. <laughs> but I can. I've 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 had I've come to to work on 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 these four hours for students, depending on what students. Okay, All right. So ninth week is your presentation. I'll try to get uh, two others maybe, so that uh, to do the evaluation on your presentation. Three minutes each. So if there's thirty of you, that's one and a half hours. Right? And then, that's the ninth week, right? Um, okay. Then, um, on week 12, this is another assessment. Um, I discussed this with a, with a friend, and then they said, we want, I want, actually wanted to do, you, to, for you to do presentations, but at the end of the day, sometimes presentation can get very interesting, maybe for the, for the first few uh, <laughs> candidates, and then it gets very boring, and you know, so what we're going to do instead is uh, oral examination. Okay. Oral <coughs> examination where, again, I'm going to try and get as many, two or three, if, if more is possible, that each of you will have to come to at least three of us. You'll need to prepare, that's for it, so 9, 10, 11, uh, this, is, this is going to happen between uh, 11, 12, and 13. You need to prepare an infograph. Because now, I mean, three minute thesis, right? Basically, that will be the structure of your of your presentation. So on the examination day, uh, you're going to go to this examiners and say, "This is your maybe A3 size infograph," and say, "This is what my my, my, my argument is about, and these are the issues, and these are the concerns." And then you know, to explain to that, and then the examiner will probably ask you, "Okay, to, to evaluate your knowledge." And, but don't worry. Don't worry, I know this is not your majoring. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. And it's really really trying to gauge your understanding, your effort, and, and not about you know, no, no, you, you, I don't need you to become experts in DNA at the end. You know, so at least you know what your topic is about, you know. So that that will happen within the that I think that's gonna happen over two weeks. Right? Eleven and twelve, or either twelve or thirteen. And then finally, uh, week 14 is the submission of your full report, which is, I don't know, normally like very long reports. What, what's a suitable length of this kind of uh, assignments? I have to ask all of you because in science, we don't really know, do a lot of these uh, assignments. Then I get very variable requests. Sometimes I do five pages, sometimes I do. What, how long do you want it to be? It's like your, if you're a topic that you want to discuss, how long should it be? Is it by words or by pages? Any idea? Usually? I'm sure you've done assignment before. <laughs> what? Not sure? Okay, we'll decide that later. Right, but basically it has, normally it's, uh, it has to have the, the elements, right? the background, uh, the technology involved, and then the concern, the issue of concern. You know, whether it's positive, <coughs> whether it's negative, whether what are, and then your personal opinion of moving forward, what, 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 what potential threat or potential advantage that is going to happen. Okay? How's that so far? So that is one hour. <laughs>